hey guys uh, welcome back to learn in a nutshell so in today's video let's see how to configure two function apps to one api so whenever we create apim in azure we can you know uh, start with function app and it gets connected to one function app in today's video let's see how to connect two function apps uh, to one particular api so for that i've created two function apps here one is called first run the second one is uh, second run and uh, the functions I've created inside that is a HTTP trigger function. So I've given the name as HTTP trigger one for this one. And for the second one, I've given the name as HTTP trigger two. And inside that, if you see to differentiate, I have made few changes in the code. I've uh, added or concatenated a string. Um, it says this is running from function app A and B. So this is a little slow. So this says this is running in function app B and in the other one you'll see this is running in function app A. So usually there will be functions that will be coming on the left, not show why it's not showing up now. So here I have given the name as HTTP trigger one and uh, the code in the code I've given it has this is running in function A. So, so what we'll do is let's go to API management and create a new API management service. Problem with API management service is it takes a lot of time to you know um, get created. So let me name it as some random number. Hopefully this is this is available. So let's give the organization name as Learn in a nutshell itself. give the email and there's a pricing tier uh, which uh, which you can select developer means when there's a downtime in uh, apim then uh, you know the apim will stop working so if it's a dev environment or qa environment or if it's a prod environment don't use developer when there's a down downtime it's going to hurt uh, the api services and your front end might uh, not work for some time so always go for uh, other than developer so for this I'll just keep it as developer and click on review plus create and click on create so it says submitting for develop deployment and it says deployment in progress so this takes some time uh, let's come back once this is done currently the time is 11.59 let's see how long does it take to get this deployed so the apim is deployed it took almost about 24 minutes it's 12 23 now so now next what we'll do is let's create a new api we'll add a new api so when you are in add api you'll see all these options if you come down if you scroll down there should be something like function app click on function app here you can click on browse and you can click on select you can select first run that will be the first one which will connect to this api and uh, the function which will select is http trigger one click on select so here uh, the api prefix let's okay let's keep it for now later on we'll just remove this so let's click on create now so we have connected our default function app to this so if you see here uh, the post and get request api will be created so the function app supports by default post and get request so that is created and uh, if you go to test and click on get and if you click on send that particular function app will run you can see this particular message coming up and you can also see the message which i've concatenated this is this is running in function a so that is working fine and whenever you are connecting this function app if you 
go to design and if you click on any one API you can see something like set backend service gets you know, added to this inbound processing if you open this it says backend ID is first run so this is nothing but on the left hand side if you come there is uh, something called as backends you can click on this and uh, you can see this first run over here so this is where they will connect this function up and you can see all the properties here so the url is this and uh, it also requires uh, some authorization function key so that will be picked from uh, the named value if you click on show value you can see the value so this named value is coming from named values over here so it's created this everything happens you know automatically whenever you connect a function app to apim now what we'll do is uh, let's connect our second function app so that is this one second run so for that what we'll do is let's select this first run let's add one more operation to this api let's keep it as get itself and uh, let's give the name as http trigger to because that's the name of this uh, function which is there in second run http trigger to and uh, you can give here http trigger to and click on save so there is http trigger 1 http trigger 2 so that is done now if you see here there is no backend policy so what we'll do is let's copy the uh, inbound processing policy from here let's copy this whole thing as is and go to this HTTP trigger too. Click on edit. Let's replace this thing. We'll keep first run as of now. So this will directly connect to our uh, first run function app. We will change it to second run. For that, we'll have to go to backends and go go to and click on add and here you can give some name let me give it as uh, same name as uh, the function app second run copy this put it here in type you select azure resource click on this drop down select the function app second run and there is a function key which you have to give uh, you can directly give uh, the value has is over here or you can save it in named values and connect it to uh, that particular named value but as of now i'll just give give it manually so what is the value which you have to give for that you'll have to go to uh, your function app there's something called as app key We'll have to we can create a new one if you need a new host key as of now i'll just copy this master key or else you can create a new host key which is dedicated to this function uh, this apim and you can paste it here so it should be of this second run function app click on ok and also make sure to add slash api so click on create so if you see here uh, the one which initially we connected to that also has slash api so that is required so that's how the function app will be called even if you go to function app and see the uh, url of the function app it has slash api in it let me quickly show you that So if you click on get function URL, 
if you copy this and just paste it here you'll see slash api then it calls the function name http trigger to so same way you'll have to provide slash api so the next thing which you have to do is we'll have to give this backend id to our api which we created the operation the new operation which we added click on first run you can change this first run to whatever you want from settings click on http trigger 2 click on edit and instead of first replace it with second and click on save hopefully this should get saved so it is saved successfully now let's try and test this one click on send so it's successful it says this is running in function b if you see some error then you can just click on trace enable tracing for one hour and you can click on this trace tab over here and see all the details where it is going all the chunks of details you can see here so these are the details of this apim then it will show where it is getting connected then the back end how it is getting connected it will show us so this is the url which we configured in back end and it will show the x function key if it is uh, you know the function key you can cross verify with your function up and see if it's correct or not and then if you scroll down uh, we'll see all the details like what is the status code 200 so that's how you do it um, hope it was useful if you want to change the name of this first run you can go to settings and change it to anything you want unfortunately you cannot change this name but display name you can change so hope this was useful um, so that's all in this video there is nothing else so yeah uh, if you liked it please do the like button subscribe comment let me know if there is any queries post it in the comment section i will uh, definitely reply to all the queries so yeah if you like uh, please do the like button guys that will be really helpful thank you so much let's catch again next video until then see you bye